Well, good Friday to you folks. And whether it's morning, noon, or night, I hope that you take something away from this devotion that you can use. This morning, I'm going to um, to read to you from Then Sings My Soul. I've read a couple of these, but I'm going to read to you. This song is He Keeps Me Singing. It was written in 1910. Though battered by life, the patriarch Job declared that God is able to give us songs in the night. When the psalmist Asaph felt overwhelmed, he consoled himself with God's song in the night. God is strong enough to keep us singing even in the night seasons. North Carolina native Luther Bridgers began preaching at age 17 while attending Asbury College in Kentucky. Afterward, he developed a reputation as an effective pastor, evangelist, church planter. The Lord gave him a wonderful wife and three precious boys. In 1910, when Luther was 26 and the future seemed bright, he took his family to his wife's home in Harrodsburg, Kentucky, southwest of Lexington. They were going to stay there with her parents while Luther was on a preaching trip. One evening, a nearby neighbor, unable to sleep, rose in the night and glanced out his window. He was horrified to see flames. Racing across the field, he gave the alarm. But by the time the house was fully engulfed, Luther's in-laws evidently escaped, but his wife and sons perished. During the long, slow recovery from overwhelming grief, Luther suffered deep and almost suicidal depression. According to some sources, but he recalled the Bible's promise of songs in the night. And several months later, he wrote both the words and the music for this gospel song about God's ability to keep him singing. Notice how he alludes to his tragedy in verse 4. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footsteps all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. In 1914, Luther married again and became a general evangelist for the Methodist Episcopal Church of South, a ministry that kept him occupied for the next 18 years with the brief interruption after World War I when he traveled to Belgium and Russia doing evangelistic work. After 1932, he served as pastor in churches in Georgia and North Carolina and retired in Gainesville, Georgia, in 1945. He passed away in Atlanta in 1948. It was Wednesday night at the church I read from the book of Proverbs uh, in um, chapter 18 of the book of Proverbs, and it talks about the uh, wounded spirit uh, who can bear it. I know there are a lot of folks having difficult times. I read of this man's life and see that he lost his wife and his three children. Um, I don't know how I would handle that. I can only pray that I would handle it in the manner he did, but I don't know that. But I do know today that it is the Lord that keeps me singing, and my prayer is, is that it is the Lord that keeps you singing as well. Now, these words are little. <clears throat> And these glasses are old. <laughs> and these eyes are getting older. So let's see if I can do this. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go 
All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Feels my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltering wing. Always looking on His smiling face, that is why I shout and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, feels my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across my way. Though sometimes my path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, feels my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Feels my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. I will say that if your heart and mind is that you are one of those folks who will walk away from God, walk away from church, and give up, as the old saying is, just because God doesn't do something for you, um, I don't mean to discourage you, but I would say you would never last in the time of oppression as some countries have it. Um, we need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, the scripture says. How do we get there? Cling to him. Read about him. Pray to him. Have... Uh, more than just a relationship with the church or with the pastor or with the building, but have a relationship with God. And when these difficult times come, and I know it's amazing, the, the writer of this devotion started out uh, mentioning Job. And it is amazing the things that Job went through. And, and folks, you couldn't tell me that Job didn't feel the pain of losing uh, his children just as his wife did or losing uh, all of his possessions. And even more so than his wife, he felt the pain of the agony in the body, the physical pain. It doesn't say that she was stricken with boils from head to toe. It says that he was. So it's easy for somebody who's not in your shoes to tell you what to do. But it is such an amazing story to read of Job and see that he just kept right on walking that he just kept right on doing what God wanted him to do. And my prayer is today, folks, that you will continue to cling to God. Just know right off the bat, if you watch this and you're not a Christian and you've wondered, um, let me just warn you, don't get saved. Don't give your heart to the Lord just so he can do things for you. Wrong reason. <laughs> Wrong reason. And I'll tell you why. He's already done things for you and the greatest thing he ever did was send his son we are saved by grace through faith if it wasn't for grace 
We'd have faith in what? We'd have faith to believe that God could save us if he would. If it wasn't for faith, there would be grace to save us, but we couldn't be saved because we wouldn't have faith. No, we're saved by grace through faith. And not of ourselves. It's not of works, lest any of us should be able to boast, but it is a gift of God. And uh, I pray today that whatever it is that may face you today, you'll continue to walk with the Lord, talk with the Lord, have the, have the relationship with Him. I'm not saying that any of you will experience what this man did, but if he can experience this in 1910 and write this, and go on preaching the gospel, then I'm sure the same grace is there for you and I today. Lord, I thank you for all you do for us. And God, I've seen and I know that there are people that, that may only watch a piece of this. Maybe uh, 10 to 12 minutes is, is too long for them to stick with me. Maybe they, maybe they uh, jump through it just to the song, whatever it is. God, I pray that you would bless all those that hear today, those that stop by, just let them hear enough to know that you love them and you care for them. Lord, we're thankful for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Uh, it's been um, it's been a long week. It's been about um, five days, just like every other week up until this time. Uh, but we get through this day, and tomorrow is Saturday, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.